Hey y'all, it is June the 10th, 2018, we're in the wee hours of the morning over here in San Antonio, Texas, holler if you hear me, alright, we're here to discuss uh, some questions and some ponderings that we've been having about, you know, the whole Parkland situation in regards to Nick Cruz and the shooting. All right, uh, we're here to discuss particular uh, questions this evening, particularly the questions beginning in why. All right, we do from time to time here. Uh, we have on this channel over the dozens of videos we've made, and there is a playlist. You can go to Free Nick Cruz playlist here on this channel and see a, a bunch of the early videos in regards to all this. We do discuss the why, but only ever so rarely. I wanted to take some time right now to do some of the why questions because I feel like it's pretty well appropriate. First of all, shout out to the man at the top of the screen, right? Uh, I, you know, he'd fallen off my radar a little bit for a while just because I've been trying to keep up with everybody. He'd fallen off my radar. I had not been aware of him for a while. And I was not aware of his stance on Nicholas Cruz. I was interested to find out. I clicked on his video, What If I'm Right About Nicholas Cruz? And I wanted to see where it is that uh, Mr. Gabe Zoldner was coming from. Right? I was kind of a little bit surprised to find out that Gabe Zoldner, in fact, does believe that Nicholas Cruz is entirely innocent in this particular situation. He has a gut feeling that that is the case. All right. A lot of people out there are having that gut feeling, in a sense. I'm also having that uh, feeling. Not not just that, though. Not just that Nick Cruz is innocent, necessarily, but that something is sincerely, honestly being covered up in front of everybody's face. All right. That I know for certain. That, that I can tell you for certain. Anything else I really can't tell you as of yet. All right, but Gabe Zolna went that route of uh, Nicholas Cruz being completely innocent, which I would probably agree with them. It probably is the case. All right, and he was discussing a particular video. I mean, the videos that you've seen, the selfie videos, you already know what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see if this video will pop up without the buffering. Please, without the buffering. Oh, so much buffering. Anyways, forget that video, but you know what I'm talking about, the selfie videos, all right? Gabe was talking about, first of all, the cast is a little bit suspect, just a little bit, and in that he has a cast one day and he doesn't have a cast the other day. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about it, uh, but nothing really coming from that necessarily. And there could be all sort of excuses for that at the end of the day. All right. And he was talking about how it looks very funny. The words coming out of Nick Cruz's mouth just look, Funny, and then that you start to wonder, like, if those are the words or ha has it been dubbed over? I mean, it kind of looks funny in a way, and mind you, it is very possible that uh, you know, the, technologically speaking, it is extremely possible to dub over someone's stuff. If you go to the YouTube channel, uh, bad lip reading is done all the time, and it's done very well. You could easily dub over someone's stuff. And it is a possibility, and I do want to consider it as that. But at the same time, it is also kind of possible that Nick Cruz just talks funny, he, that he just talks a little bit funny. And perhaps uh, you would describe it as a little bit autistically. He does uh, speak in a kind of a weird way. All right? uh, those are both equally possible. thing is, there's all sort of what's that don't add up, and they're worth looking into. I encourage everybody to look into the little what's and the little hang-ups. But I think, you know, like I said, there's not always emphasis put on the whys. And so for that, for that reason, uh, this evening, real quick, uh, if technology doesn't fail me, we're going to discuss some of the whys that I think are very appropriate for this time. Uh, for example, just to start off, why are teens acting so bad up in Broward County? Now, this video doesn't speak to the whole of Broward County, this particular one off CBS Miami right here at the top, uh, that video doesn't speak to the whole of children in Broward County. However, there's a lot of reports. So you'll hear all sorts of different reports and different news items coming from our, out of Broward County, considering the youth 
And it's all very interesting. Why are kids acting the way that they are in Broward County? A lot of people would suggest it's because of their lax uh, laws and legislation, uh, you know, as prescribing out punishment for the youth in uh, Broward County, so they just see fit uh, to act bad all over the place. That's just one example. I've seen many examples. There's all sort of actually musicians, these artists, these rappers and stuff. There's a lot of rappers coming from out of that particular area. You will note there's extremely a lot of drug use. There's a, there's a lot of what you would imagine in poverty when the laws are uh, not so strict on the youth, that youth will act bad. You might ask yourself, why are the laws that way? Right? Could ask yourself, uh, you might have seen this recently. We got David Hogg over here. Uh, and he's with his band of cohorts and stuff. And, you know, just when you thought that David Hogg was irrelevant and everybody thought that, he gets his friends together to go lie down and pretend to be dead on the grocery uh, floor. The, the floor of the grocery store. It's called Publix over there in his particular area. We don't have them around here, but uh, he goes and he lies down on the store floor and pretends to be dead. <laughs> with his friends and stuff. It's like, dude, why don't you get a job? You might ask yourself, why don't why doesn't David Hogg get a dang job? All right? Instead he's lying instead of going to the grocery store and trying to get a job <laughs> and trying to get a job, he's instead extorting the grocery store by lying down on their floor during business hours. Talking about pretty much attacking them politically. All right. <laughs> Talking about all sort of bullying. Why is he? Why has David Hogg always been a bully? It seems, and he's continuing to be a bully in front of everybody's face, and that's just acceptable. Even though uh, tragically lives have been lost due to the bullying, why is he still doing it? That's interesting. That's a why question. We got why is Scott Peterson uh, pretty much? Uh, why does he look so broken and disheveled? All right. Could it have been that his life was uh, ruined right before him and stuff and that he had no idea that any of this was going to go down and this situation was completely out of his hands? Why does he look that sort of a way? Why is he uh, completely opening up and almost coming to tears over this situation in front of ABC? Well, you might ask yourself why. I, I, I was asking myself why. The thing is, I was just pondering about it, and I assume that they think, and when I say they, I think uh, Scott Peterson, along with and especially his attorneys, think that that was a good idea. All right? And technically speaking, as a PR note, it might be a good idea if Scott Peterson were just to blubber in front of everybody and uh, admit that he had no idea and it was out of his hands that day. All right. uh, why did he do it in front of ABC uh, cameras? Well, it's a safe thing to do. You get your word out in front of everybody nationally. The problem with that is that they're going to cut whatever you say. It doesn't matter if you talk for an hour. They're going to cut it up into five minutes. This was the longest video that I could find of it on the internet. And it does include these fancy people talking about it for a little while. Uh, here's here's uh, Scott Peterson talking to sharing his side of the story. How much you want to bet that his side of the story is more than four minutes long? I, uh, you might ask yourself why he did that. He was playing it safe. The problem is that you, you should not do that. If you're in one of these situations, in or around a tragedy, you do not want to talk to ABC News. That's the last thing you want to do at this point. They were the mainstream media. They are no longer the mainstream media. They have no power or legitimacy. Nobody watches them for real except to see how absurd that their publications are. Right? So um, why would you go on there just for them to cut your little bit up into five minutes? I'm not sure. Your better bet would be, to, of course, to go on to maybe InfoWars. A lot of people think that's dangerous. But however, you can go on the Joe Rogan show. I mean, there's an unlimited amount of people on the internet, and you can go and talk to them for an hour solid, an hour and a half, about just sharing your whole story and why it is you did what you did that day and just explaining yourself. You, you could do that. There's all sort of people, Steven Crowder, I've actually seen. For example, that one Texas shooter is actually just south of San Antonio. 
It's a little while back. The the guy who stopped the shooter, instead of going on ABC News, he went on Steven Crowder. He went on Louder with Crowder. Right? Meanwhile, he had all the airtime to say exactly what he wanted to. ABC is going to cut your stuff up into little bits and pieces. Nobody's ever going to get the entirety of your story, and that's by design. Right? Why? We're asking ourselves why real quickly on some of these videos. Like, for example, this video right here at the top, Father of Parkland School Shooting. And this is kind of actually breaking because if you... Go, if you uh, if you YouTube search this right now, Father, if you type in Father Parkland uh, sh shooting resigns, the the video is probably not going to come up because it is breaking. You're going to have to filter down to more current videos. You will find though if you look hard enough this video right here where the father uh, and you might remember who I'm talking about. This guy right here, he's the father of a young girl who was killed there at the school he's resigning he's basically resigning from this coalition that was seeking to secure schools you figure okay now he's got this mission he's a man on a mission his daughter was killed he wants to secure schools so he goes into this co coalition to try and do just that for whatever reason he's resigning at this point and that's pretty that's not a good uh that's not a good look that really isn't a good look. Apparently, there is all sort of miscommunication in and around keeping schools safe, even at this point. Even at this point. Uh, you might ask yourself why uh, Scott Israel's kind of, he's died down, you know. He, he's not trying to be as out there in public as he used to be. You might ask yourself why. All right. Why is that? <laughs> I wanted to talk about that just real briefly. And actually, I want to share this video with you. It's a, of a channel that, that's actually not well known. In fact, it's got one subscriber, and I am the subscriber. It's called Sonic View News or something like that. It's actually a very well done video. And it's pertaining to Scott Israel. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if it's an extremely recent video. Uh, uh, or an extremely recent recording. It's a, it's a recent video. I don't know how recent the, the recording is, but just to be very brief, to explain and summarize uh, this speech that's taking place on this particular video, like I said, Sonic B News. Um, to summarize what's going on is basically uh, Scott Israel is having a very prideful speech. He's talking in a very proud way about himself as he typically does. All right? We've seen him do it a bunch. He's talking, he's delivering a very proud speech. And I just wanted to make note of the fact is, you know, and we might talk about this. In fact, we're definitely going to talk about it in a second. But the weird coincidence, it's a very prideful speech in which he's very proud of himself and his accomplishments. And it's actually taking place in the Pride Center. My, of the police department, I guess. They're right there, as you can see by the sign behind them. They're in the Pride Center. I do want to, I do want to remind everybody out there that it is Pride Month. All right? So this is basically Scott Israel's uh, proud speech in the Pride Center during Pride Month. And uh, he actually, I mean, I know that part's funny, but he actually delivers a very weird, it's an odd speech. It's a very odd speech because, number one, he does detail some of his, um, I guess what you would call disasters under his watch. He brings up, of course, Parkland and the Parkland shooting, in which he doesn't really talk about how much he dropped the ball in that particular situation. But he also makes reference to a particular incident that I don't think a lot of people even still remember. But I, I remember hearing about it and someone bringing it up. He does mention an instance in this particular video during this exact speech of, an, of a mass shooting that took place in an airport in which uh, Scott Israel was not very far away, but it took place in an airport. Uh, it was a mass shooting. If I remember correctly, it involved a, a lone shooter hearing voices in his head deciding to shoot up everybody at the airport. Right? And so at this point, in case if you didn't know, a lot of people are starting to use the term 
targeted individuals and which that particular case definitely seems like it, it it is a possibility it's very possible to think that it was a targeted individual kind of nudged into the lifestyle wanting to be a killer i mean you may not agree with the idea of targeted individuals but it is becoming popular a vernacular to discuss them scott israel discusses two particular incidences to include the Parkland shooting, but of course to include the airport shooting, in which it does seem like targeted individuals, and it is in Scott Israel's jurisdiction. You might ask yourself, why does he even bring that up? He could just not bring that up, and the situation wouldn't be so awkward. If you were to watch the actual meeting, this is in front of people who work for Scott Israel, and you'll note that it's a very awkward <laughs> The vibe and the atmosphere is very awkward. You're going to know, you're going to wonder why Scott Israel is saying what he's saying. But even before he leaves out, if you're to watch the video and the little speech that he has, he assures everybody that he is not political. And he, wants, and he emphasizes it for no good reason. He just tells everybody, look, you guys, it doesn't matter what you are, what race, what color, what this and that, and your creed and stuff. I don't want to get political. I don't want to be a political sheriff. I just want to, this is his, basically his own words. He's like, I don't want to be a political sheriff. I just want to be a sheriff, you know, and protect everybody. And then later on, he went into a political rant like you wouldn't believe. And I believe he almost said, God bless you, like Hillary Clinton. I mean, he said something so, he was basically groveling at Hillary Clinton during his speech in which Hillary Clinton wasn't even there for no good reason. <laughs> he went like extremely political after saying, I'm not going to be political in a speech where it was not even necessary, all right, for people who work for him. But like we said, that was a speech that he just gave and you're asking yourself probably why he did that during Pride Month, his very proud speech in the Pride Center. I'm not sure exactly, but this video right here that's now at the top, that's actually Dana Lash, and I believe that's kind of recent. We're going to look into that actually real quick. And that was already out there. By real quick, uh, see how recent uh, it was put on the Internet, as recent as June the 2nd. So it's probably a pretty recent uh, detail mentioned by Dana Lash pretty recently and i'm going to go ahead and give it a thumbs up in which dana laos is talking about oh man it's possible in fact people seem to believe that scott israel hid his son's sexual assault it is a possibility that's what they're saying uh meanwhile you know let's see it's not going to take very long i actually want to hear her describe what it is that is alleged that Scott Israel's son allegedly did as far as a sexual assault. And she's not gonna take very long to get to the point. Furthermore, we also know that there have been more reports that have come out that show just how far gone this, this, the leadership of the sheriff is. Numerous local media reports showcasing how Sheriff Scott Israel and that same cowardly deputy worked to hide the fact that his son was implicated several years ago in a sexual assault case that involved bullying in a school. Yeah, they did. They held a kid down and tried to shove a bat up his rectum. How do you like that? Yeah. Dana, Dana, I don't like that. How do I like it? I don't like it. But uh, I, I don't know. I think the question becomes, uh, Sky Israel, why is your son doing this? Why did your son do that? Not everybody grows up doing that, but your son did. That's a very big question. Allegedly, if that is true, we're going to have to get to the bottom of that. No uh, pun intended, but Sky Israel's son's doing some very questionable things. And I might ask why. I don't know if he's proud himself or he's proud as his father is but he's doing some questionable things before we get out of here uh this uh, this particular youtuber mr mediocre i put a thumbs up on his video because i thought it was pretty good uh me and mr mediocre i'm gonna go ahead and see if i could pause it put it down here me and me, mr mediocre we really don't agree in fact i think mr mediocre is pretty sure that nicholas cruz did shoot up the school in his video, which continues to buffer, he basically mocks Nick Cruz. 
All right. Uh, which is his right to do. I mean, under the First Amendment, and I don't, like I said, I gave it a thumbs up. He mocks Nick Cruz in the way that Nick Cruz is speaking. All right. And the fact is that it's not terrifying at all. It's not badass at all. There's nothing very cool about it. If Nick Cruz was trying to leave a legacy, he certainly left a terrible one that people could make fun of for a long time because it does not sound like he's serious. All right. And he brings that up. Why does it not sound like Nick Cruz is even serious about what he's saying? That's a deeper question that I consider. And also there's the questions of why were paramedics not allowed in the building? Why are we even concentrating on Scott Peterson when there, in fact, were paramedics who were also told to stand down? How many people were asked to stand down? And the question is why? Why were they? Is it because they could not see? They were not allowed to see what was going on in the school. Why have we still not heard from all sort of eyewitnesses that we heard from originally, to include this lady at the top, Alexa Mednick? How come we haven't heard? Why? Why is that? We haven't heard from her Asian friend either. We haven't heard from that Hispanic little girl who's talking about multiple shooters quite clearly. Haven't heard from that teacher uh, who, you know, who's talking about that fully armored up RoboCop style uh, dude shooting up things in the school, which was pretty well impossible. And it seems like it was covered, covered up. Uh, that's pretty well impossible. And we haven't heard from, for example, and the list probably goes on and on, from the young boy who saw the shooter pull a gun out of a what looked like a guitar case, probably was a rifle case. I haven't heard from that young boy either. And meanwhile, uh, like I said, uh, as far as I know, there there are zero eyewitnesses. There never was any eyewitnesses to this uh, particular incident. Right? And the why, I guess the answer to that why, why was there no eyewitnesses, is because this uh, young boy here allegedly was a killing, murdering genius. All right? And that's why there was absolutely nobody to this day who says that they ever saw him shoot anybody. There is no evidence that he ever did shoot anybody. You can't, you can't see or hear anything that he says. Why is that? It's because that's how our system here is trying to play us all like fools, right? <laughs> And we're going to continue to cover this. We're going to continue to get to the bottom of this. We're finding out all the questions. All right. There's going to be a lot of what's and when's and where's that we that become discovered, that become uncovered by us. But most importantly, most importantly are those whys. All right. And I wanted to emphasize that, like, for example, and we'll leave off on the fact is Nick Cruz had no motivation, absolutely no motivation to do what he did. All right. If he hated everybody and everything in the world, for example, why does he go directly to his school? You might say, well, that's a victim disarmament zone, so obviously go to his school. Okay, well, that makes sense. But it would make more sense that he hated everybody at that school. All right, why is that? Well, maybe because they bullied him. Maybe because they admitted to bullying him. Maybe because everybody thought he was a weirdo and put him off to himself. All right, well, if that's the case, then it would make sense that he would go to the school. All right, so he goes to the school and he goes directly to the freshman building, which he probably doesn't. He's 19 years old. He seems like a loner. He probably doesn't know many freshmen. All right, so he goes to the freshman building and starts shooting it up. That doesn't make sense. All right, he does it on Valentine's Day. You figure it would be romantic. He brings up a lady named Angie, all right? Uh, who is Angie? Nobody knows. Nobody even knows who Angie is. Nobody is hardly questioning it. Who is Angie? She wasn't shot up at the school. That girl that he was so-called obsessed with, her name was Dana. Her, her boyfriend did not get shot up. Dana did not get shot up. Nobody that they knew got shot up. It was the freshman building that got shot up for basically no reason on Valentine's Day, you figure it would have been a romantic thing. That's why they told you about Dana and everybody else, about the boyfriend and this and that, about the fight. They were trying to make you think, oh, maybe he had romantic vengeance on his mind. Maybe that's why he went into school. He hates everybody and everyone because his romantic interests did not work out and he's a loner, so he goes to shoot up everybody on Valentine's Day. But he also does not even attempt to shoot up his ex-girlfriend or her ex-boyfriend or nobody that they know. There is no why. There is no motivation. Had Nick Cruz done nothing, 
like I said, and this is openly, this is publicly known, he would have received a trust fund of anywhere between a quarter million to a million dollars. He's sitting pretty, all right? Most children do not live in that kind of affluent situation with the trust fund coming their way, all right? The whys absolutely don't add up, and we might try to figure out the whens and the whats and stuff. We may be wrong in some instances. We may be right in certain instances. We may follow certain leads that go nowhere. But we always have to remember we're sitting on top of a gold mine of lies, basically. And the lies are never, ever, ever going to add up. And people are just going to double down. Right? Scott Israel is just going to double down. He's, gonna, he's going to get even more political, extra political. And things are reaching to a fever pitch at this point. And I'd like to thank everybody out there who's... Uh, on top of this case, there's countless of people probably on top of this case right now, all right? And, uh, you know what I'm saying, it's just because at this point, we, you know what I'm saying, we do a way better job, obviously, than the people we have in charge. And a change needs to be made, and we're making that change. We're off in the tribulation. Anyways, we've been here long enough, and I'll holler at y'all a little bit later. It's June the 10th, 2018.